On this channel, we've done a few tutorials over the years, and the most recent one I taught you was three of my favorite uh, beginner flourishes. It was the card spring, the dribble, and the in the hands riffle shuffle. That video happens to be my top viewed video in a while, so I thought why not come back with a sequel to that one. Now as well, that video had a giveaway, so you know what? This video is gonna have a giveaway too, so stick around to the end of the video to figure out how you can win this secret mystery giveaway. A lot of times I'm at my desk, I'm editing, or I'm shooting, or I'm in the car, or I'm just doing whatever, and any time that I can, I'm usually shuffling a deck of cards, but sometimes I'm not really shuffling, and sometimes I'm also not really practicing or working on anything. Sometimes I'm just fidgeting. So in today's episode, we are gonna be talking about my top three most used fidget moves. I'm gonna be going over and teaching these three things so if you guys are interested or if you're somebody who, when you're stressed out, you like to, I don't know, use things with your hands like fidget spinners or those cubes or a deck of cards. Or if you're just getting into cards and card handling and you just want to know a few new things that you can do while you're practicing. All that and more coming up, but before we get into it, please do drop a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already, okay? That one's important. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so jump straight into it. The first move that we're gonna be talking about, I, I, I don't even really know what it's called. I'm not sure if this is a move that I created or if I saw some part of it somewhere and just turned it into something else, but I've definitely never seen it done exactly like this before. It's not even really a flourish, it's just taking a single card off of the deck, flickering it a little bit in your hands, and then dropping it back into the deck. It looks really flashy and I think it's something that segues really well in between cuts or in between flourishes. So if you're somebody like me who has a hard time with sequence cardistry, doing a lot of things back to back, it's one of those things that can kind of help you come up with the next move you're gonna do and kind of buy you some time. All right, so as we know, we don't have a name for this first one, but this is what it looks like. Uh, and it kind of it's it looks a little bit kind of like flicker I guess but it, I don't I don't really know how to explain the the finger roll that we're gonna do here. Uh, also for today's tutorial, I will be using the Chicken Nuggets V2 by Hanson Chien. Uh, definitely one of my favorite decks of cards uh, from Hanson Chien. All right, enough wasting time. So let's get into how to do this little guy. So essentially we are just doing uh, a flourish with one card, uh, but we're also doing a Charlier cut uh, with the left hand. Most of you already know the Charlier cut, but for those of you that don't, make sure you stick around because we will be covering it later in this video. So, spoiler alert. But for now, what we're really gonna be focusing on is this part with the right hand or whatever your dominant hand is, uh, and then we can add the Charlier cut later when we go over it. So the first thing you wanna do is just strike off one card into your right hand. So I have my left thumb here, I'm just gonna push off one card into my right hand. Now the way you grab the card initially is ultimately gonna determine how easy uh, or difficult it is to complete the rest of this flourish, okay? So you're getting ready to receive the card. What you're gonna do is when you grab it, you're gonna grab it in a pinch. You're gonna put your thumb in the center on the card back, and then on the face of the card, you're gonna be pinching with your index finger. You wanna make sure that you can move these three fingers, okay? It's going like that. So this part, really easy. All you gotta do is just practice doing that, okay? Now you wanna try to catch it as close to the center as possible because it's gonna make it easier for you to flip the card out and be able to put it back. All right, so now that finger roll is gonna be the uh, tricky part, I guess. It's fairly easy, it doesn't take a lot of practice. It's mostly a uh, precision thing. You gotta be able to nail the timing of it. Um, so let's go over that. So we grab the card in our right hand like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our uh, usable fingers, our free fingers here, we're gonna take the middle finger and we're gonna pinch like that, which is gonna allow us to do that, which is gonna be the next move. So we grab the card, we take it into our hand like that. Now with our free finger, we twirl it outwards so that now the face of the card is facing up towards you. So that's boom, boom. So you can practice that first. It's gonna look like that, okay? All right, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. So we're gonna take the card and then we're gonna flick it outwards like that so that the face is facing upward towards you, okay? Boom, boom. 
Now what we need to do is we're gonna do another twirl, but now this is the position we're in. We have the card kind of uh, closed pinned between our index and middle finger, okay? Now we're gonna need to use our thumb to help us turn the card back face down. So it starts like this, then we go out, and then we use our thumb to go underneath and push the card back down. Boom, boom, thumb, boom, okay? Now that first motion looks like that. So if you wanna just do it once, you're good to go. It's three moves. One, two, three. One, two, three, okay? Now in order to do the full thing, we're gonna add kind of a reverse roll back, okay? Uh, now this I think just looks really cool. It also gets you a little bit more time with the flourish, okay? And now we have our middle finger curled in towards our palm, like that, at the edge of the card, like that. And we're gonna use that to push the card out this way now. So now we're holding it uh, horizontally, right? So that's boom, boom, thumb, push it down. And then with our middle finger now curled in, we're gonna push it sideways. Now, once it's here, we're gonna continue the push with our middle finger and we're gonna push it into kind of the pocket between our thumb and index so that it looks like this, okay? Now to show you what that looks like, boom, here, down, push over into the corner between your thumb and index. And that is gonna give you all the leverage you need to do that final twirl. So once you're here like this, now the last thing you do is really simple. Your middle finger and your thumb are gonna be touching or close to touching. All you're gonna do is pull down with your middle finger and let go with your thumb, and it's gonna clear, pinching the card back to kinda how it was before, so you can turn your wrist and lay the card flat. Like that. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. And then you lay it flat. Now the only other thing you're gonna be doing is on the in-between, you might do a Charlie A cut in your left hand, which looks like this, and we will be learning that shortly. So here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. That is how you do that. Now this may or may not come in handy when we talk about the giveaway later, so be thinking of names. All right, now the second one is one that all of you guys have seen before. This is definitely one of the more popular, I would say, fidget moves, but really it's just, it's a move that anybody who uses cards learns. That is the backdrop. Now backdrop is originally done between the thumb and the pinky. Uh, I can do it a little bit, but I'm a lot more comfortable doing it between the pinky and the index. So I'm gonna teach that version of it today. If you wanna learn the correct and original way of doing it, I'll leave some links in the description of where you can find what you need. Okay, so let's get into backdrop. Okay, so backdrop is definitely one that you guys have seen before. Uh, now again, I'm gonna be teaching uh, the way that's more comfortable for me to do it, which is between the uh, pinky and index, Ugh, like that. You can also do it between the pinky and thumb, uh, and some people find that to be easier. Okay, so this one is actually really easy, but it is difficult to teach slowly. Uh, it's difficult to demonstrate slowly, rather. Uh, but ultimately, we're gonna do a very similar thing uh, to what we did for the first move, right? We're just gonna strike one card, into our other hand, our dominant hand. Now how we grab that card is gonna be different from how we do the other one. The other one starts off with just the index and thumb. This one is gonna be a little bit different. We're actually gonna grab uh, this card kind of with all of our fingers on the bottom and our thumb on top. So it's gonna look like that when we grab it, okay? Like that. Now the reason it's gonna look like that is because we're actually gonna use these fingers to twirl the card so that we can clip it and pull it back like that. So we grab it, and here's what's going on, here's the action. Twirling, and then we're gonna lift our index, and we're gonna move our pinky over to get a grip, and then we're just gonna extend. So to do this really slowly, when you grab the card, the most important thing is that you have a pivot point between your middle and thumb. So your middle finger and your thumb are gonna be a pivot point, so that way you can move the card like this, and ultimately be able to do that. Now this part is gonna take practice. You're gonna swivel the card until it's about sideways, just like the other one. Lift your index and pinky, kind of like this sign right here. You're gonna lift those, 
And once you've got the card like that, like Spider-Man, right? Then you're just gonna turn over your wrist and you are in position. Now, once you're in this position, what you're really doing is you're curling the card in slightly to build up a little bit of tension between these two edges, right? So as the center kind of pops up and bows up like that, that's gonna be your leverage to be able to shoot the card. So you're building up that tension in here, okay? And you're gonna use that until you feel that little resistance. You're gonna feel it right in between these edges here. And once you start feeling that, that's when you're gonna use your uh, index finger or thumb, depending on how you're doing it, but I'm gonna teach it with the index. You're gonna use your index finger to pull down and your pinky is gonna go out that way. So it allows the card to clear and spring off like this. Pinky and index. Pinky shoots out, index goes down. Now, like I said, this is extremely addicting once you start doing it. Uh, at this angle, it's really hard to do going straight across. I usually do it more at a lower angle. It makes it a little bit easier. You might wanna try that as well. Now, when it comes to catching onto the deck, the easiest way to make sure that you don't overdo it is just to kind of let go. Instead of push, just kind of let go. As well, when you do the shot, I would also recommend angling your wrist in the direction you want the card to go. That'll help roll it over. So quick recap, we grab it, it's like that, swivel it, buckle it here. We're gonna build up that tension and we're gonna release. And when we release, we're just gonna drop our index, pull our pinky out, and then we're gonna tilt our wrist in the direction that we want the card to move. And there you go. <laughs> All right, now this last one is kind of a twofer. I cheated a little bit, but we are gonna be talking about the Charlier cut and the Revolution cut. The Charlier cut is a one-handed cut, probably the most simple one that you can do. It's very, very addicting. And a more complex and satisfying version of that is the Revolution cut, equally as addicting, a little bit more difficult, but looks way cooler. Now, this is one that I definitely catch myself doing anytime I'm at my desk. Like if I'm you know, moving my mouse with one hand or if I'm in between edits or I'm waiting for something and I just wanna fidget with something really quick, I'll usually be doing like a Charlier or a Revolution cut or some kind of one-handed thing. Okay, let's learn it. All right, guys, so we are now gonna be covering a twofer. That's the Charlier cut and the Revolution cut. And that's a scissor cut. Woo! All right, now the Charlier is the easiest, uh, so we're gonna start with that one. Now, what you wanna do with the Charlier, make sure that you have an elevated dealer's grip, okay? So a dealer's grip would be like if the cards were flat in your hand, like you were dealing cards. Elevated is gonna be when it's more at your fingertips, okay? So you wanna be holding it like that, pinky on the bottom, index on top, uh, uh, ring and middle, in the middle, <laughs> and thumb, in the top. Now for the Charlier, it's very simple. The first thing you do is you're gonna use your thumb and you're gonna use it to pull about half of the cards up towards the sky, which is gonna forcefully drop the other half deeper into your hand. So we're holding it like this and we're gonna use our thumb to push a packet up like that, okay? Like that. Now when you do that, this bottom packet is gonna drop or you can drop it into the palm of your hand and that's gonna free up a little bit more wiggle room with your fingers. So we're here, up like that. And now we've got this bottom packet flat in our hand. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our accessible index finger to push this bottom packet up so that it's like that. So we're here, push up, index finger like that. And now once you're here, you're gonna relax these fingers to let this packet drop down and clear the other one. Now this is hard to do slow, but ultimately we're going up, push, like that. This takes practice for sure. At first you're either gonna get like one or two cards or most of the cards. In fact, it happens all the time, especially if you're doing this like in a sequence, like if you're practicing another flourish and you're trying to just nail the Charlier. Uh, it's gonna take practice if you've never done it. But once you've done it, it is very addicting. It's 
automatic and it's just something that you're gonna do all the time. All right, now the more complicated and more satisfying version is the Revolution Cut, which involves uh, kind of a Charlier, but in between replacing the packets, uh, you twirl the cards. This one is gonna start off the same as the Charlier, so you're gonna be in this elevated dealer's grip. You're gonna do the same step as you did with the Charlier. You're gonna use your thumb to drop the bottom packet into the palm of your hand. I would recommend if you're doing the Revolution Cut, uh, make the top packet smaller and make the bottom packet bigger because it's gonna be easier for you to spin the top packet when it's smaller. All right, so we're like this. Thumb pulls up, drops the packet, now we're gonna reposition our index. Instead of pushing up like we did before, we're gonna grab the edge and join these two fingers here. Okay, so it looks like that. Now, you're gonna need to use your index finger strength. Now, this is gonna be kind of an acquired thing. Uh, it takes time, but you're gonna use that to kind of push and clear your other fingers. So here, it gets kind of messy. So you're like this, you drop, Move your finger and now what you're gonna do essentially is move your ring finger and your pinky back so that your ring finger can clip this packet. And now you're in this situation which is very uncomfortable to, to hold, okay? But ultimately that's gonna give you just the leverage you need to push, let go with your thumb and complete your cut. This one's really hard to do slowly, but it looks like that. So your revolution cut starts like this, reposition, Pivot, you wanna to get to a point where you can do this part pretty easily, okay? Half the packet, pivot. Now you're gonna use your index, or I'm sorry, your ring finger to finish the cut. This is one that I've heard people say is difficult if you have small hands. Uh, I think it really just depends on the size of that top packet. If it's smaller, it's a little bit more manageable because you do have to hold the cards in a rather interesting way. Uh, for a second there when you do the cut. It also does not look very flattering uh, from certain angles. I think it looks better kind of from top down or at least from like a, a different angle. Let's see if we can. Should have done this for backdrop too. So we're here, hinge, clip, and push. This one's actually not that many steps. It's just kind of a, an awkward, for a second there, you're in a very awkward hand position. Um, but it looks good once you learn it. And by the way, if you wanted to learn that other one that I did, the scissor cut, uh, just follow this. Just watch this on repeat, okay? All right guys, so those are my top three most used and most deserving of being in this video, <laughs> fidget moves. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that I do, including dropping cards, that's probably number one, but I don't need to teach you that, you probably already know how to do it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and took something away from this, but even if you didn't, I'm gonna give you the chance to still walk away with something right now. Today's episode is brought to you by well, it's brought to you by me. In honor of learning these beginner fidget moves that you can do with a deck of cards, I thought it would be only appropriate to give away two of not only my favorite decks of cards, but two of my decks of cards. I'm gonna be giving away a Slow Hands Starters Edition and a Slow Hands Tortoise Backs Edition. One lucky winner is gonna get both decks and here's all you have to do to enter. Number one, make sure you're a subscriber with the notifications on, that's important. Number two, make sure you drop a like on this video. And number three, leave a comment and leave a suggestion for what I should call the first flourish I taught in this video. I don't have a name and I wish I did. In two weeks, I'm gonna be taking a look at the entries. I'm gonna be picking my favorite name for that flourish and whoever suggested that name will be the winner of these two Slow Hands decks. That is all you have to do to enter. Hopefully you guys are feeling creative today and feel like naming this weird little flourish that I do. If not, like the video anyway. I hope you'll consider subscribing for more awesome content just like this. And with all that being said, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day. I know I will, <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.